Sometimes things don't go the way I want, sometimes they do. Fifty-four degrees in the sun. Down here on the ground, we still have frost. Good morning, beautiful people. All right, I originally was gonna film chores and then I decided not to, but there is something that I'm gonna be doing over here that I do wanna pick up the camera for, just, you know, mostly to document it for myself, uh, but I know there's also other people that are gonna enjoy this. All right, so for today, First project in the morning. I have my chicken feed, getting ready to move the chickens. This is our mobile flock. This is a Chuck, Chuck's our rooster. These are really our breeding crew. We got them from a friend when we first got here and we've, every year we hatch out some chickens and replace the older ones. And really we need to replace almost all of them in one year because they're getting kind of old. The ladies aren't laying too much anymore, but what I use them for, mostly, they are my cleanup crew. When we are following the cow with the chickens, this is the flock that I use. I call them my, uh, my little, like, gorilla assassin crew because I can take their little coop and I can put it wherever I need it and have them till up an area or clean up. What they'll do with the cow pies behind the cow is they come through, they rake through the cow pies looking for grubs and fly larvae and stuff like that. But in the process, they spread the cow pie out to where you can walk across the yard and not have to worry about stepping in a random landmine. Because we've parked the cow for you know the foreseeable future where she's just parked, we're feeding her hay, I have a job for them. If you look at this, you might recognize this. This is gonna be garden soil. This is on the bed that we grew Oh, we probably got a, over 100 pounds of sweet potatoes out of this bed. What we need out here in this crop garden is more organic matter. There wasn't really much in the way of organic matter out here, and it showed. Even though we added amendments, we still need the organic matter to uh, lighten up the soil, make it a little bit healthier, better to grow in. So, here comes the chicken tractor on steroids method that I learned from my friend Billy at Permapastures Farm. He uh, does a tight paddock with a compost pile. You put the chickens in here, you feed them in the compost pile. It's pretty much the same system I'm doing stationary, but we need it out here. And we'd been talking, hey, where do we stick Chuck's flock? We're not gonna put them out in the woods, that's too far away. Uh, you know, a skunk might get them, or you know, whatever else, name your predator. So, this is where we need compost, is actually out here in the garden. And what better way to demonstrate the chicken tractor on steroids than to do it exactly where I need it. So. Yesterday, I got the tractor. I brought a couple scoops of wood chips and various stuff that we pulled out of the garden. I've got the remnants of a hay bale. We parked the cow here a week and a half ago and fed her a whole hay bale. And, you know, of course, there's a lot of waste because when they can walk up to a hay bale, what they knock off, they stand in, they poop in, and then they won't eat it. And so there's really a lot of hay that's just, it's spent hay. So what I'll do is I'll put the chickens in here until they start working this down and then I'll start adding all that hay. Hay is kind of funny. If you put it all in all in one giant pile, it's going to just clump up and be nasty. Whereas adding it, you know, I'll wait till the chickens scrape this all down and then I can start adding and mixing and they really break it up. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Probably go down to one net just right here. That way they really focus in this area. Anytime we've parked the chickens over a future garden bed or you know a garden bed we've worked on, the next year the growth out of that bed is amazing. So we'll just continue doing what we know works and we'll just continue to improve the soil. Down to one net. I like to run these guys in two nets because two nets is actually closer to the size of the paddock that we give the cow. But since they're stationary and I have a job for them, this is perfect. So there's a few cow pies in here that they hadn't messed with. And I do actually plan on extending the bed that was here. The original bed started about right here and went to where the net ends extra 10 feet why not it's not going to hurt anything the soil is you know marginal at best all down here in the bottom improvements not going to hurt a thing all right i'm going to feed them in that compost ring 
that way it'll you know train them this flock is really good these are really smart chickens basically anything i've needed them to do they adapt to do usually like uh, pretty much since we've had them usually i like to park them with some sort of compost pile doing the ring i've noticed they can hop into that a lot easier than having a pallet and then if i do the pallet compost pile the problem with that is it's so tall they'll jump up on top and if i have a narrow paddock like this they'll just hop on over and live their best life destroying anything they feel like I mean, it's the nature of a chicken. They like to scratch and eat and chicken stuff. I'm gonna feed them in there, let them out, then make sure this fence is hot. I'll tell you, something that happened a couple days ago. All right, ladies, come on out. Come on. Come on, ladies. Show the way, Chuck. He sees it. Hop on up there. Good boy, Chuck. Are oh, you not gonna call the ladies? He's like, no, I'm hungry today. He's a really good roo. He's gentle. And for the most part, make a liar out of me. Usually he calls the ladies over before he even takes a bite, but he must be hungry today. All right, so briefly I'll explain how this works. When I built that yesterday, uh, the net kind of came down here. I should have built the pile here. Basically how it'll work is I'll wait until they've completely demolished that pile and then I'll take the ring, I'll move it, I'll build another compost pile, I'll rake up everything that they destroyed and wet it again, pile it up, and now I'll have two compost piles and then I'll move this. Um, the following week, rinse and repeat. By the time I get off this bed, I should have three to four compost piles of finished compost. Pretty much, we just continue on doing what we're doing, and then we'll have more than enough compost right here. I don't have to move it. It'll be right here in the garden. All I have to do is just put it on the beds. Uh, something I could do, something I've done before, actually, where the garlic currently is. I had run the chickens just like we're doing right now. Did a big compost pile out there where the garlic is and I pulled the sides off after it was done composting and I let the chickens spread it. They spread it over like all the way out to the edge of the net. It was perfect. And then everything directly under where that compost pile is grows amazing. There's so much soil nutrition and soil biology that is focused directly under that. I've thought it would be really nice if I could just like have that same fertility all across the bed. And then seeing this method, seeing Billy do this method, it was like, there's the answer. I can focus the fertility right in the beds where I need it. So that's what we're doing. We're making compost, guys. It's like my lot in life. I love making compost. All right, so while I let them do their thing, I'll walk over here and we share the good with the bad. We share the bad with the good. All right, so a lot of you guys um, have seen that we had ducks, had ducks, Jack, He's one of our, the older, oldest boys are the twins. Um, Jack and Tyler are the twins. Brett's the middle boy, Corbin's the youngest boy. Well, Jack had wanted to get into ducks. And so he saved up his money. He ordered some ducks. He's had them uh, probably two years. First batch he had for a year and the neighbor's dog ate them. So we kind of took pity and we surprised him. We ordered replacement ducks. Well, he had those ones for about a year, and last week he came walking out here to feed them, and the net was all knocked down, and something had drugged the ducks out and eaten the heads off of them. I know that we've been having a problem with a skunk, and actually where those chickens are, I keep that fence nice and hot, kind of on this side where that other net was. It smells like a skunk sprayed. Like if you walk over there, you can smell it. So I assume it's a skunk. Um, I've seen it. If I'm up at around like five, 4.35 in the morning and I come out here, I'll see it. I just haven't had a chance where I can just deal with it. Usually I try to leave, you know, skunks and possums, raccoons. As long as they're not messing with our animals, they can, they can be here. But usually once they taste the blood of an animal, that's when you have to worry about it. That's when they, they just kind of get a bloodlust and they, they'll come kill the rest of your animals. Well, the problem is they came out here, slaughtered the ducks. There was one left, one, I don't know how it survived. It was inside the house, so I assume that kept it safe. But 
the rest of the ducks were just strewn across the entire orchard. All of them, they, if they weren't missing their head, then their head was almost chewed off. Really sad, Jack was pretty tore up, but he has one duck, one female. Yeah, we share the, share the bad with the good, and that was kind of a rough morning for Jack, kind of a rough morning period. He just hasn't had good luck with these ducks. Skunks have been our biggest problem. All right, today's kind of a weird day. I thought I pushed snooze on my alarm and woke up and the day had already started without me. <laughs> it's a dangerous game to play. I'm just gonna rest my eyes for a minute. So my whole day has been like set back by like two hours. Yeah. Like it feels like the whole day has just been completely messed up. Really the only thing to do now is just go back to bed and start over. But that's kind of how I got in this predicament. Right. All right, so what are you doing? I am doing Thanksgiving prep, actually. So here it is Monday, and you're already starting on Thanksgiving prep. Well, yeah, because I don't want to be cooking everything all day long, because that just gets stressful, it's trying true. to time everything. So, like, I'm roasting my pumpkin so I can make pie, and I'm going to make bread. And then, this is not for Thanksgiving, but I have stock to can, so I'll be doing that today, too. So is this, like, you want to explain what's going on with these Cherokee tans? So this Cherokee tan is from this year that we harvested um, from the small amount of pumpkins that we got this year. This Cherokee tan is from last year. It has kept an entire year just sitting here in our kitchen, like nothing special. That is one heck of a shelf life. Yeah, no kidding. Now it has like dried out a little bit, like the flesh is kind of Sh yeah shrinking. shrunken a bit, but it's still hanging on. I can't believe they haven't rotted. Like that's no. what's so weird. We've lost a couple that you know they just all of a sudden they reach that point and they just melt. From this year. Yeah. yeah. Well, from this year, like we have had no luck with our squash and our pumpkins this year. Yeah. Even our acorn squash. We uh, we grew some acorn squash this year, and I mean some of them did all right, but look that one's going bad. It's just it is so frustrating. I had a whole whole basket of random squash. We had a couple of the butternut did horrible. That was as big as they got. And then most of these acorn squash were only that big. They, uh, they were very prolific. They produced a ton really fast. And then the squash beetles were finished with everything else. And so the entire population of squash beetles moved all the way down to the end where the acorn squash were and they killed them yeah. like in two days. Yeah. Like you walk out there, you move something and it's just teeming. You know, I'm not one for spraying poison, but I did think about it. And then Meg came out and saw it and she said, go get the weed burner, just burn it all. All right, today's theme for me is compost. So I'm gonna go out in the chicken coop, play with compost. It's, I'm like overdue for yeah. turning and rotating my compost piles and yeah. cycling stuff through. So I'm gonna go out and do that. All right. All right, just for the sake of anybody who isn't up to speed, I build a compost pile in the chicken coop. I feed them in that. They get in there, they turn, they eat any any biota that's in there, any grubs or anything that might be in there. They scratch through it. The action of them scratching through it breaks it down even faster, like turbo speed. It'll wind up all over the ground, it gets manured. I'll pile it back in there, do that as many times as it takes. Usually within a week to two weeks, it's ready to come out and it, I'm ready to build another one. Well, I'll take that out. I put it over here in this pile. This is where they can't reach it, and this is where it'll sit and finish. I go off of temperature. That pile is still up at around 80 degrees, which tells me it's it's pretty much done. This one held probably 140 degrees for two weeks. Perfect. It's a little on the hot side, but that's fine. As soon as this starts cooling down, that tells me it's dried up enough, it's used up all of its energy, all of its water, and it's ready to like it's basically ready. I could probably compost it further if I wanted to, but as a top dressing, this is great. It's still a little bit woody to rototill directly into the dirt, but like I've said in videos past, we're kind of moving away from having to tear up ground. We would really like to be in a place where we could just, you know, pile up stuff on top and let the earthworms and everything else in the soil do the rest. I've got a compost pile over there with Chuck's flock. Now I've got a compost pile system here that I've probably already made 10 yards of compost. I've used a bunch of compost. I've used it everywhere. I've used it for trees. I've used it for garden. I've used it in the greenhouse. Like it is, it has been really, really nice to have so much compost and to be able to make so much compost. So with all that said, I'm gonna go grab the tractor real quick. I'm gonna haul that pile down to the bank, which is in the dugout, and build that again and move everything out of here and start the process. I've 
got to pick this up, get this out of here, and then while I'm down there, I'm gonna bring up, yeah, it makes sense. Take a scoop of this down there. While I'm down there, grab a scoop of wood chips, bring that up here. So rather than, since I'm filming by myself, I'll let the boys run around. We kinda, this weekend had the stomach flu kinda come through the house. It is currently working its way through the house and the older two are the ones out of it. If they're feeling good enough to actually run around like hooligans, so be it. I'll just let them. It's a nice sunny day. I'll just leave the camera here. I can run on time lapse and we'll just go from there. I guess it's just the day for it. It is Monday after all. So I am actually gonna have to pump the brakes on compost. All the wood chips and everything are ready to come out. But if you guys remember when I built this, this was all sweet potato vines and they are almost broken down, but they are not far enough along to put them in there. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm just gonna rough this up, pull the, the ring out of here let them have at it for just a couple days, maybe like two days, and they'll completely rake all this out. And once it's raked out, they'll finish breaking it down. I really don't want to grab this, it stinks so bad. Usually it doesn't stink like manure. It doesn't stink like decay, uh, which tells me it got too compacted and it's just like bad bacteria. So what I need is I need it to be aerated. I need it to dry out a little bit which they can do, but because it's vines and it's all tangled together, they weren't able to get down low enough and pull it all apart. So what I'm gonna do, I'm basically just gonna turn the pile. I'm gonna get down, it's so packed in there, all of the wood chips and stuff that is broken down has like fallen in and it's just packed together as a solid mass. So I'm gonna get in here with the pitchfork, I'll pull it all up, I'll pile it and turn it, over there in the corner. You know, it's my fault. I probably should have ran all those vines through the wood chipper or something to break them down or chopped them a little bit more than I did. I chopped them up with a shovel, but not very fine. Sometimes things don't go the way I want. Sometimes they do. This is actually probably the only problem I've ever had with this system. Apparently there is a point where they can compact it if it's too hard for them to turn, scratch through, that it will actually compact and get all nasty. I'll dump this back over there in the pile, let it kind of air out. It's all right. I'll just be a couple days behind what I wanted to do. All right, that'll have to do for now. It'll be okay. As long as I get a compost pile built before we get rain, that way it'll soak up some of this. This is actually probably okay. It'll allow this to dry out a little bit. It's pretty just sloppy at the very bottom. So having them in here, they'll scrape through everything, break it down a little bit more, and then it'll be ready to build a compost pile. Adding some oxygen to it, We'll get it kick started again. I guess my project is uh, on hold for a couple days, so I guess I'll go find something else to do. <laughs> hey, 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 no coffee. <laughs> oh man, I don't think so. Uh, you lost well. your mind? <laughs> You're already hyper enough. <laughs> so I was gonna pick up the camera and like show what's going on for dinner, but apparently I'm going to have to pick up this rambunctious hooligan. This child is on one. <laughs> so I actually think what's going on. You know that white blood cell spike you get right before? Mm, yeah. Whatever we picked up, I don't know where we picked it up because we've only gone like one, two places. Just karate, yeah. Just karate. But it's making its way through the house. It's it like is. a stomach bug with a fever. Not fun. No. All right, so I figured I'd grab the camera and show what you're making because people are feeling poorly. Yes, so we're just, I'm making chicken soup tonight. Chicken soup, chicken I'm, noodle soup. Yeah, I roasted a chicken yesterday, so I've got the leftover chicken. And then I have a stock that I've been canning and I have like a good amount left, so. I'm Enough really to make a, a soup. Yeah. So nice hearty soup, good. Yeah. 
That was good chicken stock too. It was. Yeah. I just realized I did some work this weekend out there by the barn and I didn't film it. So oh, I'll yeah. go out there and I'll update you guys yeah. on my, my dirt work project. It looks really good. All right, I figured I'd get you guys up to speed on everything down here. As far as like anything else to do down here, it would just be fine tuning. Uh, never mind the uh, little brother testing ramp. So I got this sloped away from the barn. Started working on getting it sloped this way. Pretty much everything, like it still kind of slopes this way, but I gave myself a line right here. That's how far out I wanted it to come before it starts sloping off that way. And then just, you know, pushed around the dirt, leveled it out. After I was done, I went and grabbed the truck and I drove down here because I wanted to see because it looks so much bigger. I was able to pull right here and make a three point turn and get out of here. I have never been able to do that since we've been here. You know, driving in here, you back in or drive in and then back out. Pretty cool. Like it was pretty cool being able to drive in here and almost completely turn around a vehicle. I think I am eventually, when I get to it, add it to the, the grocery list of things to do. That little piece of retaining wall that's right here, I am going to tear that out and build a little bit more retaining wall where the dirt is pretty tall. Because if I slope this, then it's the same same problem that we had. But I'll build a little retaining wall, maybe some steps right in here, and then probably the ramp on that side. Now, the ramp will wash down water in a big rain. That's just the nature of living with hills. I mean, everywhere around here is hills. <laughs> That's just how it goes. I, I can deal with that. A little bit of wash down is fine. But the whole thing is if I can get it graded right, and the water actually goes where I want it to, and slow enough, that's the main thing. Slowing down water, getting it to leave, but slowing it down is how you stop from losing all of your topsoil, as we have dealt with. All right, I think that's good for out here. Get the greenhouse all closed up. Going back inside, it's probably just about dinner time. Hi, chicken fingers. <laughs> chicken fingers. Dinner was good, thank you. Chicken noodle soup was a good choice. Yeah. I kind of have a sneaky suspicion I might be getting it. Probably. Because like, I haven't had any appetite. Like, as the day has gone on, I didn't get hungry for dinner. And my throat kind of, we'll see. I thought that last time and I ended up not, I was like the only one who didn't get sick. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a bummer, like, we just had something like a, a month, month ago. ago. Yeah. But, I mean, tis the season. Yeah, we is. usually we're all outside collecting sunlight and stuff like that. And as soon as it gets cold, we quit going outside as much. Yeah, and it has been pretty gloomy this season. It's too, been pretty so. gloomy as, since it got cold. With that, I think we're gonna wrap it up right here. We will catch you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Go ahead.